All right, welcome to Hoops Tonight here at The Volume. Happy Friday, everybody. Round two coverage of the NBA playoffs here at Hoops Tonight is brought to you by Chase Freedom Unlimited. How do you cash back? All right, so just like we did over the last few games in this incredibly entertaining Lakers-Warriors series, we're going to do a little film session this morning. I had a chance to rewatch game five. Not too much to learn from that specific game just because I thought effort played the biggest role in that particular game, but there were some adjustments in pick and roll and specifically some stuff surrounding Draymond Green and Andrew Wiggins that I think could translate forward into a game six. So this is basically going to be a game six preview. You guys know the drill before we get started. Subscribe to the Volumes YouTube channel so you don't miss any more of our videos. Follow me on Twitter at underscore Jason LT so you guys don't miss any show announcements. And if for whatever reason you guys miss one of these shows and you can't get back over to YouTube to finish, don't forget you can find them wherever you get your podcasts under hoops tonight. All right, let's talk some basketball. So we can't stop or start anywhere other than with the Steph pick and roll. That is the biggest chess match piece in the series. And it's been the Warriors' best opportunity to score against the Lakers' half-court defense when they're truly locked in. The Lakers actually defended the pick and roll much better in game five than they have in previous games, in large part because they did a lot more switching. Now they're running, they're still running their high drop coverage, trying to keep Anthony Davis in the paint as much as possible. But basically whenever Steph gets the defender caught on the screen, he's taking a couple lateral dribbles and Anthony Davis is just coming out on him, right? Um, as a result, the Warriors did a lot more of their motion offense and got in, out in transition a ton and they had a bunch of guys in double figures. It was a much more all-around type of performance from the Warriors offense. But I do want to zoom in on the Steph pick and roll a little bit because I do think it's going to play a significant role in Game 6 when the Lakers bring a much better defensive effort. So, um, like I said, on a points-per-possession basis, the Lakers actually held up a lot better in this game than they did in the previous three games. But the Warriors did have a couple of specific things that they had some success with that if they want to have a real good chance to win Game 6, they need to try to replicate. So, first of all, they were doing a better job of getting Anthony Davis into the or getting Draymond Green and Anthony Davis into the screen. And the way they were doing this is with a screen for the screener. So um, a lot of NBA teams refer to this as RAM action. I don't really care so much about what the labels are. You guys know me. That's one of my pet peeves because it's kind of one of those things where people throw it out. But the reality is, is every coach has different labels for everything. Like, for instance, the Lakers refer to their drop coverage as center field, right? Like, labels are labels. I don't care. To me, it's a screen the screener. So basically, imagine Draymond Green being guarded by Jared Vanderbilt or LeBron James underneath the basket and Anthony Davis being guard, guarded by Andrew Wiggins. So what if I want Anthony Davis in the ball screen – but I want Draymond Green as my role man because he's my best pick and roll role man with Steph Curry. Well, an easy way to do that is I have Draymond Green start under the basket and I have Andrew Wiggins set a down screen for his man, specifically LeBron James because he likes to try to conserve energy. He's typically just going to call for a switch, right? Uh, but they got some switches with Jared Vanderbilt in that situation as well. Essentially then, Draymond Green is running up to go set the screen and Anthony Davis is going with him, just as a byproduct of the fact that they ran a little screening action before the ball screen. The Warriors did a lot of that in this game, and I definitely think that's something they should continue into Game 6. It's their best opportunity to bring Anthony Davis into the screen and have their best role man in Draymond Green involved. Um, the second thing I noticed, interior screening. So this is uh, what the, some of the things, uh, something that they accomplished with Draymond Green on the floor that I think is something that they could uh, explore a little bit for, further in game six. So you run Ram action, you get um, Anthony Davis into the ball screen with Draymond Green. It ends up being a switch. Now Steph Curry tries to beat Anthony Davis off the dribble. And Anthony Davis, is as quick as he is, he uh, is not quick enough to stop Steph Curry while it's stopping the three-point shot. Um it's all about the help that's going on behind, right? So Steph can beat Anthony Davis off the dribble, but Anthony Davis is super long and he can block shots from behind. And obviously the Lakers have a lot of traffic in there. So one of the things I thought that they did was really smart in this game is they had a couple possessions where Draymond Green would get the switch, right? So Draymond Green would have, you know, Austin Reeves on him. And instead of going to post up or clearing out and trying to get Austin out of the play, Draymond just tries to get in the way. So he basically kind of short rolls into the lane, and as Steph is trying to beat Anthony Davis off the dribble, he basically just gets in the way of Anthony Davis while Steph is moving laterally to go around him. There's a scooping layup that Steph had on a similar type of play. Draymond's just really good at just kind of backing into the position he needs to be to be in that driver's way so that, you, so that he can't help at the rim. Um, the other thing I noticed, too, uh, and you saw this on one of their first buckets of the game. So if you guys remember my Game 5 preview, I said I'd like to see the Lakers help off of Draymond when he's not involved in the ball screen. 
Well, one of the things that you have to do to counter that is just be aggressive and look to score. And Draymond had uh, 20 points in this game. Some of it's, you know, uh, tough to replicate, right? Like he hit a couple of jump shots. Who knows if those are going to go in in the next game. But I'm more concerned about like, hey, you get Dennis Schroeder on a post-up switch, attack him and go to the paint. Got a, a foul that way. Early in the game, there was a play where Jared Vanderbilt is guarding Draymond Green. They're running a Wiggins pick and roll. Vanderbilt ignores Draymond to come over and help, just like I talked about in my Game 5 preview. Steph hits uh, Draymond Green cutting to the basket, and he just literally just attacks Jared Vanderbilt, just goes through his chest and uh, and makes a layup. I actually think that one might have ended up being an and one, if I remember correctly. So overall, the Lakers on a points-per-possession basis defended the pick-and-roll pretty well, did a much better job of switching and, and, and rotating on the back end. Really, most of the Lakers' effort issues were in transition defense. and Transition defense and then LeBron James just kind of conceding shots to shooters and then Anthony Davis just not quite giving that otherworldly I can erase everything type of defensive effort. But for the most part in the half court, the Lakers did okay. As a matter of fact, through five games, as we zoom out and look at kind of just the totality of the picture, the Lakers have been the better half court offense. They're averaging 98.8 points per 100 possessions against the Warriors half court defense. Plot twist, Sacramento was build as a much better offensive team. The Warriors held those guys to 93.3 points per 100 possessions in the half court. So the Lakers are actually five and a half points better offensively per 100 possessions in the half court than even Sacramento was. Uh, Golden State in this series against the Lakers half court defense is averaging 97.8 points per 100 possessions. So one point worse than the Lakers are. And actually only one point better than the Memphis Grizzlies managed against this Laker defense. So the Lakers are winning the half-court battle where the Warriors have been able to keep things close and, and, and have their successes in transition. The Lakers are giving up 120 points per 100 possessions and transition defense possessions, allowing the Warriors to run on 14.3% on their possessions. And the Warriors have been a much better transition defense team, allowing just 109.2 points per 100 possessions, which is a really good number for transition defense. They are running... Uh, the uh, Lakers are running on 15% of their possessions. So as we zoom out, the series is really close. Honestly, where the uh, uh, the Lakers have pulled away, where they've had built their 3-2 advantage is in clutch situations. The Lakers have absolutely dominated the Warriors in clutch situations when the game is within five points with less than five minutes remaining. That's what NBA.com uh, labels as clutch situations. There have been eight total clutch minutes in this series, and the Lakers have held the Warriors to just 62.5 points per 100 possessions in those clutch situations. As a matter of fact, go to uh, NBA.com and you'll see the Lakers have been by far the best clutch defense in the league this year. That's when they're truly engaged and Anthony Davis is giving everything he's got and it's just incredibly difficult to score against them. They've been like 25 points better per 100 possessions than the next best team in this field in clutch situations. And it's a big part of why they are 5-0 and in this postseason counting the play-in game in games that involved clutch situations. I, I uh, talked about this a lot during the season, but you you uh, pain builds scar tissue, right? I, I, the pain of losing builds your character to the point where you learn to win. Like LeBron James loses in 2011 in embarrassing fashion, which b leads to his run, right? Like Steph Curry loses in 2016 in heartbreaking fashion and then goes up a level for the next, uh, you know, seven, seven years or so, right? Like it's, it's a part of the basketball player's journey. Um, don't get, don't be surprised if you see Giannis Antetokounmpo make massive improvements as a, as a free throw shooter and just with his overall skill set after a couple of uh, early playoff exits. Losing is part of building character. The Lakers lost so many heartbreaking clutch games this year. How many times did we do show where it's like, well, the Lakers blew another one, right? Like so many times that happened that as a team they've built scar tissue from that and they've actually become an excellent late game execution team. The Lakers have outscored the Warriors by five points in eight clutch minutes in the series. That's the difference in the series. And it was all on the defensive end of the floor. They locked down the Warriors after they tied the game in game one. They didn't score the rest of the game. And then in game four, um, after they went up of what, like 99 to 96 or whatever, the Lakers basically locked them down the rest of the game aside from a couple of baskets here and there. So that, that to me is what bodes well for the Lakers moving forward in the series is 
They've been a little bit iffy with their effort, particularly in game two and in game five, right? So at home, in front of that home crowd, when they really lock in defensively, it's just really difficult for the Warriors to score. And no one else on the Warriors on the road has been able to give Steph the offensive punch that he's needed to prevent him from having to carry the entire load. And honestly, even Steph Curry's shot making himself hasn't translated to the road. He's been excellent. He's averaging 24, uh, 27 points per game in the two games at Crypto. Game four in particular, he was magnificent orchestrating the offense, but the actual shot-making piece hasn't been there. He's shooting just 41% from the field in those two games and 29% from three. And the Lakers have held the Warriors to 98.7 points per 100 possessions defensively when Steph is on the floor at crypto. So that's what makes me think that the Lakers are going to win in game six. My prediction right now is that the Lakers will win by 10 to 15 points or so. Um, I think they bring their best defensive effort of the series, just like they did in the last two game sixes. I think Anthony Davis and LeBron in particular are going to be super engaged as athletes on the defensive end and in rebounding situations, which will flip some of the athletic uh, dynamic that hurt them in game five. And I think the role players will play better and I think they will win. That said, like I said, after game five, this is not Memphis and this is not that 2020 heat team from the bubble that was pretty banged up. You have to beat this team four times, and they are the defending champs. They have the best player in the league. They have one of the best perimeter defenders in the league in Andrew Wiggins, who can also give you 20 points a game. They have one of the best interior defenders in the league in Draymond Green, and they have one of the best coaches in the league. So this is going to be an absolute war. It's not going to be easy, but I do believe the Lakers will win. So what is the case for the Warriors to extend the series? Because I give them about a 35% chance to win this game tomorrow night or tonight. So let's let's take a look at a, a couple of keys that I think are going to be important for the Warriors to extend the series and send it to seven. So first, the usual stuff, like Steph has to be amazing. Uh, you need to defend extremely well. You need to take care of the basketball, push the ball in transition, all that stuff. But I want to focus on the front court. I want to focus on Andrew Wiggins and Draymond Green because I think they are the two biggest swing factors in this game. Let's start with Andrew Wiggins. So Clay Thompson and Jordan Poole still struggled uh, to a certain extent in game five, right? Like I think... Uh, I think Clay was like three for twelve, and I think Poole was like f- like four for fifteen or something like that. I can't remember, but they didn't shoot well, and I think they combined for twenty one points. So that breakout type of performance you were hoping for in Game Five didn't really happen. But Andrew Wiggins was awesome. It's ten for eighteen from the field, twenty five points. Um, a couple of specific ways that he had success in the role, obviously with Steph Curry as the uh, uh, as the ball handler, but he also had uh, quite a few possessions where he succeeded posting up. He had a post up basket on D'Angelo Russell where he beat him to the middle and then made like a tough floater over the top of Anthony Davis. He had a uh, a post-up basket against Lonnie Walker at the end of the game where he got an and one. He had the post up, or the uh, rip through kind of like a push shot in the lane against Austin Reeves. The reason why Andrew Wiggins matters is as we go back to game six in crypto, yeah, there's game six clay's a real thing and he might just get crazy hot and make a ton of shots. Don't get me wrong. That's certainly a possibility. Same goes for Jordan Poole. But schematically through the series, the Lakers have those dudes locked up. Like they, they just have been almost incapable of having any sort of success against the Lakers, especially in the half court. So they're not really a safe bet. Again, if you get game six clay, like that's just Warriors championship pedigree. And guess what? If you're the Lakers, you just get to lose then. And certainly you should be hoping for that. But I don't think that's as safe of a bet as Andrew Wiggins, who actually has an athletic mismatch and a size mismatch against a lot of the Lakers rotation players. So he is actually the safest bet. So posting up, obviously the role man possessions, posting up and attacking on those late clock rip throughs. But another big one that I'd like to see them try. Do you guys remember a play in the first half where uh, Andrew Wiggins did a spin move on Dennis Schroeder and made a little floater in the lane off the glass? That was actually an inverted pick and roll with Steph Curry. So Anthony Davis was guarding Andrew Wiggins at the top of the key. Steph Curry, with Dennis Schroeder on him, set a ball screen for Andrew Wiggins. And Anthony Davis is huge. He's not a screen navigator, right? So he gets easy separation from Anthony Davis. Dennis Schroeder switches on to him, but he's backpedaling, and Andrew Wiggins is too big for him. So he's downhill, hard spin move, and then he makes that shot off the glass. So that's another great action that I'd like to see the Warriors explore a little bit more in Game 6. Inverted pick and roll with Andrew Wiggins with the ball, with Steph Curry as the screener, Anthony Davis guarding him. That's a super, uh, that's definitely a a little opportunity there uh, for the Lakers. And and if anything, it'll just be another example of a situation where they'll be forced to switch, um, uh, which which Anthony Davis can be hesitant to do sometimes, especially with Steph Curry on the floor. 
If you need a guy to get you 20 points in a pivotal road playoff game, Andrew Wiggins is your safest bet, in my opinion. Secondly, Draymond Green. Obviously, the defense on Anthony Davis. Um, do you guys remember the possession where he took a charge uh, in this game and, and Anthony Davis like landed on top of him? You guys might remember in game three, the game where Draymond and a lot of the guys were talking about officiating. I told you guys like the difference between it being a block and a charge is being there earlier. The two plays where he fell down in uh, not his fifth, not his fifth foul, but the third and fourth foul in that game, he was late. One of them actually went to review and got upheld. He was late. He just wasn't there in time to take the charge. And what I said was, after the game, I said, he just needs to be a little bit quicker with his anticipation and a little bit quicker with his feet. And if he gets there in time, that's a charge. And here you go in game five. He actually sees it coming a little bit faster, slides his feet into that space, takes the charge. It's a clear-cut foul. Even if that would have gone to review, it would have been upheld. So that's the difference. It's a game of inches. Draymond was a little bit faster in game five, and he was able to get the stops that he needed. And then the, and then secondly, just pushing the pace. I thought Draymond Green, I talked about this uh, after game five, but he has to push the pace like he did in game five to avoid LA's half-court defense as much as possible. Again, I expect Los Angeles to win. I give them about a 65% chance of winning this game, somewhere 65 to 70% chance to win. And I give the Lakers about a 30, 35, or excuse me, the Warriors about a 30 to 35 percent chance to win. But those are the keys to the game for the Warriors. Got to get a great Steph game. Got to get a great defensive effort out of everybody, particularly Draymond and Andrew Wiggins is your best bet to get a uh, big scoring performance to send that game Uh, send this series back to Chase. All right, guys, that's all I have for tonight. Uh, For right now, we will see you guys after the game tonight.